Would all the members of the TPC please come and take your seats? Yeah. All right, the meeting of the uh, Transition Planning Commission uh, will come to order. And if we could start as usual by taking a moment um, of reflection silently and um, think about the charge that is ours and the uh, task ahead. All right, thank you very much. We do have, I believe, Dr. Smorelli, is that correct? Uh, we do have some individuals who were asked to participate in um, some speaking engagements, and they'll be coming in and out, and um, uh, it gets to be a bit of a challenge, but we don't want to um, not take advantage of opportunities that we have. Um, we received a, an invitation, or I received an invitation. We get so many um, emails that I don't know that you got this one directly, but the Memphis Delta region of the um, PTA is meeting on uh, January 28th, or it is attached, isn't it, right underneath there, okay, the Winter Conference, and uh, they um, provided us with an invitation to that. I'm sorry. Sure, Thank party. you. Forgot to approve the minutes, didn't I? I'm so glad y'all keep me in line here. <laughs> you have the minutes before you, and you've had them, uh, you received them yesterday. So is there a uh, motion to approve the minutes? Motion to approve. It's been moved by Mr. Holden. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Stanton. Any uh, additions or questions or deletions to the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor of approving the minutes say aye. 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 All opposed say no. The ayes have it and the minutes are approved. Okay, now we'll get back uh, to um, just my report. You, uh, there have been a lot of opportunities to speak and a lot of people interested in what we're doing. Uh, they are, the speaking engagements are listed in the back of your packet and any of you who are who are being invited to speak and uh, if you could um, let uh, Diane or where are you are you the one that is going to now put these on the calendar until we get someone that yeah. okay um, we'd love to know it just because it's it's good to know where you are speaking and what you are doing and who is inviting us and um, and sometimes people, pop up and show up and support you when you're, uh, when you're there. And I, I want to take a minute to um, compliment the Shelby County School Board on that, too. I have been in a number of speaking engagements, and I would look up, and there would be members of the Shelby County School Board that had come. If you would, um, I mean, all of us, uh, again, we, we're having a lot of invitations, so that's, that's a good thing. Uh, we have been having a little bit of a time getting our calendar uh, to work for us, and it is, uh, as Chris um, Richard said, and I got credit for it, and it was one of the best lines I'd heard, it's like changing the tire on a moving car. Uh, that's how our calendar is, and so uh, what we finally realized, uh, and, and I was one of the uh, fenders on this, is that we do have a calendar on our website. Uh, we have kind of a rolling listing of what we're doing, but you can also click on, and it is a calendar. And we have Mike Patches. Is Mike? Mike, you're going to. He's going to uh, project our website and show us exactly how we can get there, so that we can see. And that way, that really simplifies things because it can be easily added and changed and uh, so forth. And then the calendar that is keeping up with all of our uh, everything will be on this calendar, but the paper calendar will not be as critical to have it all the time. So, Mike? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, first, uh, everything about TPC right now is on our website. Our website is shelbycountytn, one word, dot gov, dot gov. If you look at the left side under popular pages, the first entry is Transition Planning Commission. 
we go there and you'll see that there are many things that have been added, all the audio recordings for the meeting, some video of meetings that you've had, uh, contracts and RFPs. But the thing we're interested in tonight is this calendar. The, on this page, it just has a brief uh, three item, what's the latest three items, and you'll see a little, uh, the date and time and a little title. If you click on the calendar, it brings you to a set of calendars, and this part may be the confusing part. The first thing you have to do is select what calendars you really want to view. And I'm sure you don't want to see our county's training schedule or the main, so just select here. It unselects all of them. And for our purposes, let's select the Transition Planning Commission and the Transition Planning Commission speaking calendar, which is uh, separately maintained by Diane and her staff. So you hit the little magnifying glass to search, and it brings a list in a list format you could drill down on the, the individual items here, like uh, chairman is speaking, and it will give you information. The other thing I'd like to point out, because I heard somebody speaking about being in the wrong place, uh, if you click this that says view map, it'll present you, and it's your choice, uh, Google, MapQuest, Bing, I'm familiar with Google. So based on that address, it'll map it out for you and you could get directions if it would respond. There we go. So in this particular case, it shows you and then you can use the regular Google functions to get directions if you need. The item that uh, Chairman Prescott referred to, besides the listing, which it may not be convenient, uh, is these tabs up here. You see list, week, and month. If you hit week, then it summarizes for that particular week everything on the calendar, and it puts the times out to the side. Uh, one thing I do want to show you is it does limit the listing, but it gives you a little indication here. If you hit show more, every <coughs> meeting for that day and y'all have a multitude of meetings. The other one that people find very handy is a month at a glance. So you can see here it shows the whole month of January. Uh, one of the things we are doing by default it doesn't put the time out there so Diane's staff is going back and you can see some are already there like the 7 p.m. Bartlett listening session and they're going to be placing the time in the title so that you can see it immediately the title of the meeting and the time you can also if you want if you just hover over and click once it'll give you time and location it gives you a little pop-up that tells you a little details about it without having to drill down if you want to drill down further you can do it here in more details the other thing we have interest in is printing this calendar. If you look up here, we have a little printer icon, and you can say print this page, and it will reformat it for you in something that's printer friendly. Now, depending on what browser you're using, you can print right from there. Uh, this is Internet Explorer. If you right click on the calendar, and you can select print and it will go to your printer. I'll select print preview so you can see that and it'll format it for your printer. Now uh, you may want to do it in landscape so it's a, a little larger and so that would print out that's the exact look you would get on your printer and then when the staff updates all the times they'll have the times on them also. Now I would also like to point out some ways you can electronically have these meetings in your calendar. If you use a calendar at work like Outlook or if you use personal calendars like Google or iCal from Apple, there is this little subscribe using iCal. You hit that and there's some instructions here and you can subscribe to a calendar. 
What that means is you don't have to keep checking back. These events will go into your calendar, whether it's an Outlook calendar or an Apple calendar, uh, as they're added by the staff. So if you carry a phone that has your calendar on it or your uh, Outlook at work, that will automatically keep updating that calendar for you. So I kindly highly recommend that one because at work I set the calendar and if, if I don't have it set then I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Uh, one other function for notifying you I'd like to point out it's called notify me and that gives you an option. You can be notified by email or you can be texted on your phone. To use it, you would have to uh, enter your email address here. I won't do that right now and take your time up. If you go down at the bottom, there's a lot of things you can be notified on the county's website, but down at the bottom is the calendars again, and you have a choice. You can sign up by entering your e uh, email number for uh, emails, and as events are being added, you will automatically get an email that tells you about it. And then over here, there's a little phone. If you click that, it'll ask you for your phone number. And it will, every time an item is added to the calendar, it will text your phone saying there's a new speaking engagement. The last thing I'll go over here, I'll go get back to the calendar itself. There is a search, which is pretty handy. For example, a search that I put in is, uh, I st start date of January for the month of January and I searched on Prescott and then I got a list of everything <laughs> uh, the chairman was doing. So if you all want to keep Would track of her, <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's his email address? I'll let him know. So uh, that's the functionality of the calendar. So I think it can be used several different ways, electronically or paper based. And Diane's staff uh, if, when she's informed, they are, they're updating this, this calendar uh, back at the county and they'll keep that master calendar up because uh, I can see that your meetings are multiplying quickly. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm not able to find what you're looking at exactly. I'm online right here and I get a master calendars. I got January, February, and then the list of speaking engagements. Well, Did you click on choose what calendar you wanted? Uh, <clears throat> okay, so you see there's a master calendar in the center and that is what I just described. That is the calendar that was just sent to us from the communications committee that okay. had the, uh, since Wrong. then we've discussed it and we're not gonna post right. it. We were making it harder, uh, Mayor McDonald, than it really was, and uh, you catch us at that every time. Every time we do something, you seem to catch us at it. So. Well, just while I'm at it, if you go to the 13th of January, which is already passed, it said that there was a Bartling, Bartlett mm -hmm. listing session. I noticed that. I, noticed that too. <laughs> I said, you know what? We're going to have to start getting the mayor's things right on here. It's going to be the death of me. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and let me just say that two things. One is that we may be making it harder than it is. We have this, uh, this uh, capability. Diane is going to be keeping it. Uh, we're going to uh, try to correct these mistakes, and if we don't, Mayor McDonald will call us and tell us about them. <laughs> and then um, it, it's just, you know, we're just getting kind of through some human error and a lot of things happening really quickly, and, um, and it, it really, um, just let me tell you that you're noticing the ones that you're involved in, and I'm getting all 60 of the emails, but, um, but we will get this. Um, We'll get it smoothed out. We we can promise you that. Uh, just because I'm looking at you guys, I see um, Mr. Reeves and uh, Miss Malad and um, Mayor Goldsworthy. Are there any other school board members back there that I'm not seeing? 
Thank you all for being here. Chairman Prescott, can I make one more comment? You sure can. Uh, if, if you have any problem with the functionality of the calendar, it's not working right for you, if you let Diane know, I'll get one of my staff to call you back and, and work it out with you in case you have any problems. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, next on our agenda, at the last meeting um, the, in these open issues, things that were left um, kind of hanging, we had some amount of discussion uh, about the need that we have to stay in communication with the Shelby County School Board, and particularly as we move into this critical time where we are uh, making um, decisions. And David, you had sneaked out for your uh, talk. David is had one talk, he's come back, he's going to have another one, but, um, and, and at the last meeting, the Mayor uh, Luttrell had um, some questions and others too, and uh, really this is something we've just kind of been um, kind of laid back about, and we felt like after that discussion, I felt like that we needed to have some direction and really put together some ideas about the kind of things that we might need to hear about. Now, I have, you will find in your packet a list of several things. I don't intend or, or pretend that this is um, all inclusive, but these are kind of the kinds of things that uh, just in giving it a little thought and after the discussion that um, I thought that we would um, need to hear about and we ran this through the executive committee and um, at that time um, they didn't have other ideas, but please feel free to give them and you can just see them there, uh, the kinds of uh, things that we would want to hear about. Now, because the board meets once a month, uh, it is what we will do is put you on the calendar uh, the last, uh, don't you meet the last Tuesday? The last uh, Friday. If the, you have other meetings uh, that are called that would bring up these kinds of things, it would be good if you, um, as the lia liaison, would share them with, uh, with us. Well, typically the... the uh Typically, the uh, the board is meeting in work session the uh, the next to last Tuesday, and then the last Tuesday. So, if you want it, if you want those two reports, those sure. last two Thursdays of the okay. month, then we could do that. Well, let's do that. I think that would be good. And just to go over these, um, these were some examples. Any decisions regarding the selection of the superintendent of a merged district? We we keep hearing about this, so we know this would be of interest. Uh, something that we need to be apprised of if any um, kind of process has been begun. Any major contracts coming up for renewal that would be binding beyond the 2013 merger date, such as any um, labor organization contracts or any, any such contracts as that. We know there is some stipulation that um, contracts of that nature, I believe, would not be entered into, but you may have some conversations about that. Any major systemic purchases or contracts in either one of the individual districts that might extend beyond uh, that merger date. Uh, any area where two districts are working together toward merging policies, and they are doing that and doing it quite well in some, um, in some instances of things that they're having to do uh, today. They uh, did that, I know, work together in uh, terms of your charter applications and there are other things that you're beginning to merge. And this helps us to know where you are on things that would uh, apply to us. Um, discussions or dis decisions around surplus property and policy governing disposal of property um, and any other issues that you as Shelby County board members believe the TPC should know about and could potentially affect the plan being developed. So um, if any of you have any comments about these, have any additions to these, uh, please let us know. But it just was feeling like last week that we needed to make this a little bit more formal, right, Mayor? Okay. There, are, there are two points I'd like to bring up. You go right ahead. I always let the mayors bring up whatever points they want to. Um, in our various subcommittees, if there are issues that are coming up in the subcommittee deliberations that uh, there's some uncertainty or there's some question about interfacing with the school board, that needs to be, I think, surfaced by the committee subchairs. Okay. Subcommittee chairs. In our subcommittees. Yes. Yes. Okay. And then the second one is the elephant in the room. Uh, which know, is? Which is. <laughs> uh, do we, and, and maybe this is a discussion item, but do we need to 
be informed of the efforts that the suburbs are making as far as suburban di or municipal districts and how that might play into our planning. Okay. <clears throat> and, and more than what we're reading in the paper, you mean? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time, timelines, all yeah. that. Of course, we're getting a lot of that information in the newspaper. You know, would, uh, <clears throat> would Mr. Spiller? I'd like to ask, uh, what would it be proper for us to ask this uh, consultant, consulting group that talked to these uh, municipalities to come and, and tell us what they said and so we could maybe ask questions? And also, I'd like to know, when I first started this, we, I remember we were talking about the district was so big that we were going to talk about maybe breaking this thing up into three or four different districts. That might be a real good thing to keep this thing from being so contentious. If we could, if we could break it up in three or four districts and we had a map that would actually, in the communication thing, this would have to be running the paper, I guess, but it would give people something to think about. Um, and it, and it, might, it might keep it under a Shelby County umbrella. That's what I thought. Well, Mr. Spiller, just to that last point that you're making, um, the Administrative Organization and Governance Committee, which is chaired by Mr. Pickler and Mr. Um, Jones, are look, considering um, organizational structure right now. Um, that would be one of the um, approaches that they are considering. Um, that particular decision is slated to be made, I, we believe, and we talked about this in the committee today, uh, toward the end of February. So that's one of the very first um, decisions that will uh, be made. Um, Ms. Richards, you had a comment about the first. Yeah, I think the uh, uh, concern that I have, and we talked about it a little bit in executive session, is that we need to stay very focused that our statutory mission is to come up with a plan for a merge city and county school district that includes 150,000 children and all of the areas currently encompassed by those two school districts. Um, we have to continue to pursue that. The municipalities are going to do what they are going to do, and I think it's good to get information on that. But um, we just need to stay on target. We have a very short timeline, and from the start that they've undertaken, it looks like there's going to be a lot of um, conversations and discussions and people who don't sit at this table trying to work through what they want to do. Okay. You, you <laughs> may, but I I'm, I'm recognize Mr. Jones okay. first, if you don't mind. And, and Mayor, part of the conversation that took place in executive committee was that this body exists under North Todd. And North Todd specifically outlined that we do not exist beyond some point in 2013. And under that same North Todd law, municipal school districts cannot exist before then. So as, as we talked about, the focus of this group is to talk about what we have now. Yes, there are things taking place in the periphery, but that's not part of the charge as was delineated for this body under North Todd. Mr. Mayor Lytle. I, I certainly don't disagree with, with what's been said by Ms. Richards or Mr. Jones, but the reality of it is, is if we plan for a 150,000 school district with X number of schools functioning, and that's not the reality that we end up with, then we're going to have to come back and make adjustments accordingly. And all I'm saying is that this is something that needs to be considered as we move forward. Okay. Yeah. Can I speak to that for just a moment and then uh, Dr. Green? Are you asking for recognition? <laughs> 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 You're granted. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, maybe I should let others speak uh, prior to that. but. In terms, I do understand what you're saying, and I want to hear everyone. Uh, but at the same time, our charge is to come up with the plan um, that we have discussed. Uh, yes, there are competing um, goals and objectives going on. I don't know that we are necessarily relieved of our duty when the plan is finished and when we uh, give it to the State Department and the school board for approval. Uh, so if something, but 
But when we do that, we still won't know anything for sure. Uh, so it may be that uh, we are still engaged to come back and adjust that plan if something else uh, changes. Because we're, again, uh, nothing is to happen until August of 2013. So what I foresee, and I, I do understand that, but I really feel strongly that it is not our job to develop alternative plans right now. That is not our charge. I don't think it's our job to do that. Um, I think that we all have ears and eyes, and I wouldn't be opposed to uh, having a presentation from, um, you know, to hear what uh, what is going on. Uh, but should we, um, it, there's a long time between when we're going to develop our plan and, and present it for approval in 2013. There's a year between that. And so we may indeed not be relieved of our duty. We may be asked to come back if, if there is a changed landscape and adjust that plan. And I, for one, feel that I am uh, appointed to this job until we get the job done that we have to do. And so um, I would sure hope that I could be done with this in August, but if not, uh, if not. But uh, that is, that's my uh, response. I understand the concern. I think that it would be good, but I, for one, do not think it is our uh, role to um, look at alternative plans. Dr. Green? I think that we probably could benefit from adding a, a copy of each of the plans to our library for review by the Transition Commission members at their leisure. But uh, I think uh, bringing in the consultants to speak with us would be counterproductive and get us off track. Any other comments? I just wondered if yes, I was sir. just called an elephant. <laughs> that wasn't very nice, was it? Uh, you know, Mayor McDonald, you know what? We really try to treat you better than that. <laughs> so we're all learning, and I'm not going to call you an elephant at all. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, it, it, you know, look, you all, we're, um, we're grown-ups. There's a lot of things going on right now that are, um, that are difficult, um, but, but we just have to keep our heads down and do what we have to do. We did discuss taking a position, but I'm not going to take that's going to be discussed with the um, with the um, community engagement committee. Is there any other uh, any other comments about that? And again, I certainly would entertain. Um, I, I don't think it would really um, if we were to gain information, I think it would be from um, perhaps Ms. Mayor McDonald or some as a member of our team. Uh, if we would like for him to apprise us of some things, and he would be willing to do that, I think that would be, um, you know, we could certainly do that. Um, but um, th I think that would be the extent of it. I don't know if I'm going to send BCG. Well, we've let you talk to all the, mate. we've encouraged you to talk to the mayors and all. So, um, so we'll, we'll think about that, okay, and, and you all let me know. And there may be other there may be other opinions here, but I'm just going to go out on a line and say that that my job as the leader of this team is to keep us focused on what we what we've been appointed to do, and that's what I'm in, intend to do. Yes, sir. I think that if uh, as we get into the administrative committee meetings and we talk about structure. Uh, as a member of that committee, I will be presenting the, the concept that uh, there would be some recognition of the existence of these other systems and that our planning would include that. And that's something that we will talk about in committee. Uh, so I, I want us to be careful of discounting this whole idea so quickly when the administrative committee hasn't made a decision yet. It may, in fact, be a part of a proposal or at least a minority view of a proposal that's brought forward to this major committee. Uh, secondly, I think if you're talking about communications and taking a stand in regard to those things, we need to be careful as a committee that we are uh, consistent. Uh, I'm hearing some members say that, that these things don't exist, we shouldn't acknowledge them. Then I'm hearing other members say we're going to take a stand on them, so uh, just, just those points. Yes, sir, and I, and I appreciate uh, your comments, and, I, as, and they may be discussed. And that, I think that we're, the problem here is that we're ahead of the, 
the suggestion of the communications committee because uh, in terms of a statement, it has nothing to do with whether we agree with or disagree with or approve of or disapprove of. It's just what, what our job is, really. So I think that um, that's a point well taken, and we're just a little bit ahead of that, of that particular uh, conversation. Uh, okay, let's see. The, uh, the next items that are on the, uh, are on the agenda really look at the information that we were given last week. Um, they were the committee agreements and the, there were a number of uh, documents that had to do with um, some um, um, uh, benchmarking or uh, milestones and um, um, interdependencies and so forth, and we just simply were not able to get that information out uh, in time for um, everyone to to really uh, spend time with it and studying it and, and so forth. So I'm going to call on uh, Lane McBride, and um, he can. Um, hey, there you go, Lane. Come on up here, and um, you know, be up here if you have. Um, comments to make, uh, both on the committee agreements, those are probably the most important uh, thing, probably each of the committee chairs has worked with um, our consultant, but some of you who are not committee chairs may have some questions about those. So Lane is up here to um, answer your questions and we can entertain any uh, discussion of those documents that you might have. Any questions? Um, what, what we may do is that there were a couple of, change, of kind of significant changes on a couple of the committees. Um, so I, I think it would be good to just make mention of those. And so the, the most significant change was the Educational Services Committee. And I'll defer to the co-chair. First, let me say that our consultant firm uh, went above and beyond in an attempt to make these changes. Uh, why, why did we even go back and look the second time? The Educational Services Committee has identified at least 40 major topics that will have a bearing on the an exemplary kind of instructional program that is imperative for this community. Uh, that one is non-negotiable. Uh, having said that, uh, we went back and looked for a moment at uh, the, the, our agreement, and we became somewhat more specific in order to be able to include a larger number of of key issues. We're still going to follow the format, but I think we're in agreement, Lane, that is correct. Uh, but we're going to take a little different approach. And just one example, if you will notice on that particular page, page one of the Educational Services Committee, uh, recommendations may or may not include uh, what to expand in the district, what we need to continue, what is it that we need to stop. Uh, uh, best practices. Uh, we were reminded yesterday in one of our meetings that there were outstanding and a series of best practices already going on. And we don't want to give anyone the idea that there aren't outstanding exemplary practices among us. But we want to look at everyone. You know, if Finland and Singapore are doing something that makes a difference, we want to know about it because we are looking still at that world-class uh, opportunity for a curriculum. So that, with that in mind, that, that represents the basic changes. We are striving to meet the, the benchmarks and milestones. Uh, I would simply add at this point that the Educational Services Committee, as you know, we have divided ourselves into three uh, task forces. All three of the task forces met yesterday. Uh, they are still gathering the information, and when I look at the timeline, we're, we're, we're kind of okay with the timeline. One or two of the people uh, who met yesterday and a couple of those committees are present. Uh, Dr. Green, would you have any comments about your particular one dealing with learning? Um, 
Yeah, yes, I can make a few comments. The uh, work of the subcommittee on learning is divided into uh, grade level groupings. Uh, there is a pre-K-2 grouping, uh, three, four, five grouping, which is considered elementary, a six through eight grouping, which is the middle school, and a nine, 12 grouping, which is the high school. On, on yesterday, uh, the pre-K-2 uh, committee met, uh, and they discussed uh, pre-K-2 uh, programs that uh, are currently existing in both systems. The, spa the staff spoke to uh, st the student population. Uh, they spoke to the programs that are currently being offered in both systems, and they spoke to the organizational structure of uh, the delivery of program services to uh, pre-K students. The um, expertise of the staff in both school districts uh, that administer these programs, uh, it, uh, they are to be commended uh, because uh, from the presentations yesterday and the discussion that were, that were held uh, led the group to believe that uh, what is recommended for pre-K programs will be outstanding and we will all be pleased about them. In the next meeting, the staff will discuss programs for grade three through five and in subsequent meetings, six, eight, and nine, 12. Professor Keel. Would you have any comments you'd like to make about your task force? Uh, Mr. Padgett, would you like to make comments regarding your task force meeting? We're pushing. We're, we're moving forward. We're moving forward, and we're sticking to the tenets of our nine charges. And as Dr. Green said, pre-K-2, um, that's critical that they'll start. And we spent a great deal of time discussing that critical component in our learning task force meeting and trying to create some world-class standards that would be acceptable and current. And that's what we're after here. We're not just after average. Friedman said average is not good enough. So we're working trying to create that thing that makes people want to stay with us. Thank you. Uh, the templates were designed and they are being uh, completed by both districts. Uh, we again, we can't say enough for the two staff. But uh, and then on on Monday the 23rd at 10 a.m. in the Shelby County Board of Education Auditorium, the entire uh, educational services committee, we are meeting and making our reports, and then moving on to the next steps. I hope that uh, I may have jumped ahead a little bit, Madam Chair, but I, I, I hope it's all related to what we're looking at on the screen, you can maybe understand why uh, we felt it was absolutely necessary to uh, expand uh, or re rework somewhat our committee agreement. If there are no questions, I'll, I'm finished. So that was, a, that was a difference in that one, uh, that particular agreement. Are there any other, anything else you want to uh, bring up? I, I, I don't have anything to, to add. Any other questions about any of this material? Uh, the, com the committees have worked very hard to get to these agreements, and they really do speak to what we will be uh, considering in terms of recommendations and what we will not, so they're critical. Um, the milestones are important. They may or may not change. Yes, sir. Just a point on... The material we have uh, on our table, for instance, in the HR personnel, mm -hmm. uh, there was a, a slight change. Mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't make it to the printed form. Uh, okay. there's, an, there's another little uh, uh, wordsmithing that was done in committee, and uh, they have it. The, the BCG, uh, they would have it. They just, it just didn't get printed out. Would, we li would you like to share it with us? No. <laughs> it just uh, it just allows for uh, both uh, systems to have input 
it's down in the very bottom part on the left where okay. it is already in red mm -hmm. and it just says note. Uh, we'll uh, recommend both design and process timing and it adds that, uh, I forget the exact way that was worded. That uh, both districts will be involved in the, the design of the harmonization of the complement. Okay, good. All right, thank you for bringing that one. Anything else? I mean, it's even though we're not on a committee, it is very important uh, what we are doing because we are um, attempting to follow the law uh, to every extent that we can in terms of what we consider. Any other um, comments about these committee reports? Okay. Um, well, that includes the um, project management or uh, I think that all of those documents are in there, so I'm assuming, uh, yes, uh, Ms. Bradshaw. Chairwoman Prescott, uh, Mayor McDonald's comment actually um, made me want to add a piece that you're asking for okay. um, Shelby County Schools to present to us. I think that there's a, um, if there is any legislation that is happening that has <laughs> impact on our work, that that committee bring that information back up to, back to us also. Okay. So I'm sorry. Talking about the report um, that we receive from Shelby County School Board each each week, so that add that to that any legislation that would be okay. Um, the next item we'll move to our uh, committee reports, and Lane, um, I, you just left, but do you have an update on that? So the, the only broad update I have. Rest, I'll defer to the chairs. Uh, the BCG team is continuing our engagement with the members of the Shelby County Board of Education. And we, uh, to this point, completed 15 of 23 conversations. And uh, as was discussed last week, we will plan, once we've completed those conversations, to bring synthesis of what we've heard. And we do have a, a report now from the Community Engagement uh, Committee, and we've already um, kind of given a preview of some of that and I, I hope that will clear things up so that we realize that we are only really certainly not um, expressing opinions but just talking about what it is that we're charged to do so um, whichever one of you we uh, have been uh, the community engagement committee has been um, um, been busy um, and um, we have a schedule, a revised schedule uh, of listening sessions that we're going to share with you and that will be distributed in a minute. Um, we um, have been concerned to get this, uh, this schedule of meetings assembled as quickly as possible um, so that all of you might have that and, and, and know what, what the dates, locations are for our community meetings. In our um, committee meeting, we discussed uh, the number of meetings that uh, we wanted to have, and we expanded the number uh, from originally um, 10 uh, to 14, to up to 14 uh, meetings um, in order to accommodate uh, the, uh, the needs within the city of Memphis for um, uh, in order to, to make sure that we were able to reach as many people as possible within the community, given the size of that community. And so we, uh, we expanded those, and you'll see the expanded list of meetings um, in the um, uh, schedule that you've received. Now, in addition, uh, we have meetings coming up this coming Monday evening, Germantown meeting and simultaneously a meeting within the city, 7.30 p.m. Um, the, the one meeting will take place at Houston High School Auditorium. The other meeting is going to be at Mississippi Boulevard um, Christian Church. You'll see the calendar projected up on the, uh, on the screen as well for those who are uh, in the audience. And uh, each uh, commission member has on paper we, um, we are developing a packet of information for, uh, that will go um, 
uh, to the person who's the organizer for each of the meetings. You will notice that there are a number of vacant spots under organizer for the meetings. And we would hope that uh, members of the commission would take on responsibilities uh, for helping to lead with both organizer, presenter, and facilitator. Um, and if you can also attend, we would uh, appreciate that and we'd like to be able to, uh, to know that so that we can put your names down. Um, and so um, if you would communicate to either um, Kenya Bradshaw or myself, we would appreciate that. Um, let's see. Um, this past week, um, we had meetings uh, in four locations within the city of Memphis at the PACE uh, meetings, which are the uh, parent engagement uh, organizations, parent organizations uh, within the Memphis City Schools. Um, and we spoke with the leadership, the regional leadership from those organizations. And that was, uh, we were invited to make the presentation, so they weren't the full listening process. Um, but we were, um, we did have an opportunity to hear their concerns and to uh, register those. The notes from all our meetings will be collected and, uh, and uh, provided for the board as well as uh, on, be posted on our website. Now, w any questions with regard to the calendar or comments? Yes, sir. The, uh, the question, I guess, of, of location, uh, certainly, I certainly don't mind uh, doing what you have scheduled for February 13th in Bartlett and have had some discussions about that. But at the time, I didn't realize that you were looking at Bellevue, and that is so close. I'm wondering whether we need both of those locations. Um, the Bellevue location is basically to serve the northern, northeastern sector of um, Memphis City Schools in, in terms of their system, and there are a number of schools that are in that system, and so my sense is that that's an appropriate location uh, and central um, for those particular school populations. Oh, I, I agree. I, my question is, should, should we just not do the Bartlett location and invite those people to come to Bellevue? Because you're going to have, you got Millington up in the extreme northwest, and you, you're just so close there in, in terms of how many things we've already got to do. I'm wondering if Bellevue wouldn't suffice for both of those. Uh, I'm comfortable would with they be, Would they feel slighted? Uh, would, you know you, you know your area better. I, I don't think that they'll feel slighted. Okay. I, again, as long as we, as long as we propose it. Mayor, you want some water? Pardon me? <laughs> yeah. I think as long as we promote it on the basis that this is for no, uh, Northeast Shelby County instead of Northeast Memphis, uh, we are accustomed to using that phraseology out there. Our, uh, our uh, Chamber of Commerce has a northeast uh, component to it. So I just really think it works and you cuts know, our calendar I'm, down a bit. I'm comfortable with that since you changed the, the title uh, and uh, in, uh, reinforced the fact that, that they wouldn't, the constituent group would not feel slighted, then I could support it, James. We, uh, we use the northeast quadrant and the southeast quadrant because that's the way in which Memphis City Schools organizes um, their schools. And as a consequence, then, we use that phraseology um, as a way of ensuring that we uh, provide opportunities for all folks. It wasn't in any attempt to exclude a particular section of the community. It was a way of ensuring that we provided as much of an open opportunity for folks to participate. So we've heard the recommendation just to ask that we <clears throat> remove Bartlett. What we'd like to do is bring this back to our committee and then just we'll bring a full amended schedule back to you. And the, on the only potential change is that one. Yep. 
there is a change. Uh, I received a phone call this evening that we've been requested by the Millington mayor um, um, to change the night on which we meet because they're not sure that mayor and aldermen will be uh, finished by 7 o'clock, even though we had earlier uh, that office had set this time and date um, in working with them. So so it was a change that we were the new tonight. mayor. The, the new mayor. mayor. The new mayor made the request, and I think uh, Mike Kebby spoke with her and is <clears throat> looking at the possibility of Tuesday. Tuesday, right, correct. That's So what, that's what we're working on. Yeah, Linda Carter is now the mayor mayor until the next election. Right. So that there, that will be a change and we'll have that finalized in the morning. But basically this is the uh, calendar that will go out. Any other comments or questions? Thank you. Then uh, what I'd like to do is to uh, address two concerns that have been presented to uh, by the uh, committee to the commission. We have a question. Before you get to in, in noticing your listening sessions, um, west of Austin P, or whatever the street's name, west of Austin P to Frazier, Watkins, that's a very dense territory, and I'm looking to see. There's a Frazier High School one. But that's one. extremely <coughs> west. I'm asking about Austin P around Raleigh Springs, Craigmont, that area, what targets that area? That's an extremely dense population. So That's in the northeast, as I understand. So would Kingsbury not satisfy? Would not. Um, my opinion would not. So, so what we'll do is get <coughs> information back to the committee and, the, and then ask both districts, because we, how we determine <coughs> the location of these, we ask both, both districts communications pieces to to make recommendations on where they felt um, based on staffing of the schools and then also support what would be most feasible, but we, we will bring that information Just back. Do keep that in mind because that's a huge, thick chunk of homes. I travel through it every day, and um, I, just, I just think that's too much of a chunk not to invest in stepping in between. So I have a question around a school. What, what would be your recommendation um, around another location? My recommendation might be a church somewhere around Yale. There's some huge churches over in there, um, Spring Hill Baptist perhaps, or, or also um, St. Paul around that Douglas community, somewhere in there because, I mean, there are a lot of families in that territory, a tremendous amount. And there's also a, 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 a county line and a city line that sort of traverses there um, in that Northwood Hills area. There are a great, I think the, the, the density, the thickness of um, the Memphis City School System's population might be the cradle. And I, I see you have Frazier, but that's extremely west. I would suggest that you, Kingsbury sort of takes you a little more southeast. You, you're missing the wide swath there. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, there's, there's uh, Mr. Imani, there's Imani's uh, there with Atkins, so there's lots of opportunities. Mr. Keel has a comment. I just wanted to note that this is not an uh, exhaustive list. There's a whole second phase of community engagement that will take place and to the extent that there are pockets that you know aren't necessarily on this list. I think that that's good to know so that we can include them on a you know second phase list as well. We'll call that a B list. Let's call that a B list, okay, or, or something like that. But That's phase two list. Phase two or something, but yeah. not second phase. So um, in addition, then, what we'd like to do is to uh, turn your attention to the uh, frequently asked questions, Transition Planning Commission frequently asked questions document. I believe all of you have received that. Is that true? Is that, is that true? Um, no. She's about to pass. Nithi's about to pass them out to you. Okay. Okay. So um, while these are being um, um, handed out, you'll see projected up on the screen the uh, 
what what you will soon have in hard copy. And this has come about as we have worked, uh, have taken notes from our experience in the listening meetings and in other meetings and found what, uh, what seems to be really important. And then uh, in, in also the identifying the concerns of folks in the community and trying to address some of those. And so that's, that's what we've attempted to do tonight. One of the things that we found most, most important has been um, the um, guiding principles. And so what we have done is restated those. How is the TPC going about making its plan? And, and so we then address the, the, the guiding principles as those principles that are undergirding and directing the work that we do. The second question is, um, I appreciate the opportunity to provide feedback, but I want to know when the TPC will have something for us to react to. When can I expect by what, when can I expect, by, what can I expect by when? There's a typo there. So uh, we'll get that corrected. So uh, then, the TPC aims to have its full set of recommendations on a plan for the merger by mid-June. Between now and then, the TPC actively seeks to engage the community. In the January and February timeframe, TPC is focused on gathering community input, studying national best practices, and understanding the current state of affairs across the two districts. Starting in late February, when the TPC begins crafting some of its recommendations, we will begin sharing those with the community. So we've asked lots of, had lots of questions about what can we expect and when. So we're trying to answer that. The, what I'd like to do is come back to the next question, which is within the combined school system, will my child be able to remain in his or her current school? And I'd like to come back to that question after we go through the others. Uh, the next question is, I am very happy with my child's teachers, but I've heard that there will be many changes in staff due to the length of service or other factors. Is this true? Will my child's teachers be moving? Again, that's a very important question that we heard frequently in Collierville and other places. Our response is, the TPC aims for stability within the schools for both teachers and students. We do not foresee making recommendations for wholesale movement of teachers and staff. Furthermore, the Norse Todd Bill preserves pension, benefits, and existing tenure rights of teach, teaching and non-teaching employees. Okay. Then the, the next question is, busing was once used as an attempt to equalize educational opportunities. Is that going to be part of the TPC's recommendation for the Unified School District? No. In the past, busing was implemented as part of a court-ordered remedy in school desegregation lawsuits. Because those lawsuits have been resolved, the TPC will aim for all students of Shelby County to have access to world-class education delivered by high-quality teachers, regardless of geographic location. The plan will strive for excellent schools in all neighborhoods. Finally, I have heard that in order to equalize offerings of special programs across all schools that my child's school may have to give up some offerings, such as, and we list several of those, what will my child's school lose? Answer, the TPC desires excellent community schools and options for all students. We aim to expand best practices and successful programs throughout all schools. Neither the TPC nor the Shelby County School Board has discussed the reduction of programs or services because of the merger. Furthermore, the Norris Todd Bill ensures that there will be no reduction of educational services in the unified school, in the unified district. And then uh, the, the other is, um, the other question is, what is the TPC's position on the potential for separate municipal districts? So we want to come back to that as part of our conversation, and we're asking for uh, some adoption uh, of, of this frequently asked questions and the statements uh, enclosed therein. 
Um, the first one that I want to address, and then Kenya's going to address the last one, is within the combined school system, will my child be able to remain in his or her current school? And we would like to say the aim, the TPC's, TPC aims for stability within the schools, which includes the least amount of disruption for students and families as possible. Are you asking now for um, conversation on that? Yes, Mr. and we Bowling. feel like that really has to be a decision that the entire commission makes uh, and so that we can put this forward. Okay. I'll recognize anyone that would like to comment on that. Well, I would, I would speak in favor of that. I, I think that, uh, you know, with the discussion that's currently going on with the Unified School Board, and the discussion that the superintendent from the Memphis City Schools has brought forward about the possible need for closings, it would be unwise for this body to, to promise that every child would go to the same school, but it would be good to let people know that the, that the idea is to have the least amount of disruption. So I, I love it. It's simple. It's crisp. I, I, kudos to whoever came up with that. Thank you. Other comments? Yeah, I just would add that those school closures would have been proposed or taken place regard regardless of this. Yeah, yeah, I'm not criticizing that point. There may be others that need to be discussed in future times. Right. That's why I think we shouldn't, as a committee, be saying we can guarantee you your child will go to the school they're going right. to today. A a absolutely. But I think that what, and I think what the need was, there seemed to have been just a a silence almost from this particular body as a, as it relates to the work that we will do. Now, I don't have anything. Are we opening it up to? I think we're just, look, just I looking think at this one. Just this, okay. This one. Yeah. At this point in time. Okay. Yeah, and to, um, to Mayor McDonald's point, I think that what we are aiming to do, and we use that term, aim to do, is really try, in all cases, to try to stick as closely to what it is that we have been charged to do and to make our statements. And in none of these statements are there any promises, but in all of them they talk about our goal, our aim, what it is in terms that directly relate to the guiding principles that we adopted. So we're trying to be sensitive to everything um, and that's, you know, um, that's why we probably just should have started with this. Um, but at the same time, and I think you've done a great job of that. And I know you're not done, but um, any other comments on this particular one? Obviously, you're asking us about this one because you felt this one was one that might be a question that we all needed to. Okay. Right. Because once, we've, once we adopt this, then this needs to be the position of the commission um, in the public. Well, and <clears throat> I might add, too, that honestly this just repeats what our guiding principle is, that we are really going to, yeah. Other, um, other comments before we move? Yes, sir. You are absolutely right about that. I'd so move. Thank you. It's Thank been you. moved by and uh, boot by Dr. Green, and who seconded? Second. And seconded by Mr. Uh, Holden. Uh, <coughs> in as much as we do um, intend to take a vote on this one, and now, and please excuse me for my parliamentary lapse here, but uh, are there other points of discussion on this particular one, um, Mr. Jones? My my only point of discussion would be bec uh, just as we did some slight modification mm -hmm. to the guiding principles, I would almost suggest, because this seems to be one of the most pressing items, that we move this as to the first thing that we talk about. Because I would say that most parents, they probably don't care about the administrative, don't care about logistics purchasing. This is how it affects them, and I think this is what they want to know. Any comment on that suggestion? Yes, I mean, I understand that. <laughs> <laughs> I understand that, and I, I think we can accommodate that. We would, pro, we would request, and we, we desire to have the guiding principles first, though, well, 
in the first question. Maybe yeah. this right before, right <coughs> after the guiding principles then. Yes, yes, sir. As opposed to uh, the, uh, we appreciate the opportunity. That's the mm -hmm. only part. Any other discussion before? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I certainly agree with the, with the concept, but it's it's a little bit vague. And I, I guess I would prefer some language that says a little bit more definitively. We don't know. We can't guarantee. It, it's our desire that it remain the same, but with the zoning, which we know nothing about at this time, there will be some changes. Well, but so I, think I do want to add that. If we could that stay in order, Mr. That, that, Jones. <laughs> but no, that, that's my. I just okay. feel like it may yes, sir. be a little bit more definitive. Other, other comments? Now, Mr. Jones, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, recognize you, and then I've got some other hands up. Go ahead. Perhaps, Mayor, to address that, we put in that those type of decisions would be made by the Unified School Board, but not the TPC. So I just want to give a clarifying statement. We are asking the Unified School Board for a response to these FAQs also that we will be providing at our community forums. We felt that there we we do have it on our original draft that this was in that this falls in the purview of the Shelby County School Board. And so we went to Shelby County School Board and asked them to give a response that we want to share because we didn't want to overstep our bounds and speak on something that falls into their, their roles and responsibilities. One of the, and, and one of the things that I will share with you, and, I, and it's really sensitive to what the mayor is saying as well as all of us and I think what we're trying to do is have as much integrity as we can as we move forward with this but I know that in a talk that I did this um, this week actually at uh, Houston High School with a set of um, parents on their parent teacher board I did exactly what you said mayor and you know said now you know certainly there can be no guarantees and there are all kinds of situations and what they said to me was, oh, sure. You know, it's like they knew that. It was it almost, I was stipulating something basically uh, that they knew. And I think we have all been very sensitive to that. And as we, and as we project these uh, statements, uh, that certainly as, we, as our conversation goes, um, we know that there are no guarantees. And that is part of our, our conversation usually. Uh, are there any other comments about this one before we vote Yes, on I want to respond to the mayor, if okay. I may, sure. and that is to say that we had addressed that, um, I think, as you noted, and um, our concern was to be, to use the other mayor's comment, <laughs> as crisp mind. and concise as possible because we didn't want to confuse and there are limitations to what we are really authorized uh, to address. So the language we had was, while school attendance zones are ultimately determined by the Shelby County School Board, there have been no recommendations regarding making changes in attendance zones by the TPC. That was the language we had in originally. And the, after much consideration by the committee, we eliminated that because we wanted it to be, to have some to be short and succinct and, and very clear around uh, the stability that we're seeking within the uh, schools. So that was the reasoning. Is there any other discussion? Now, remembering our um, vision session and our desire that we reach consensus at any point that we could. Uh, let me ask first if there is any objection to us in issuing this statement. If there is, then we'll take a vote. Well, only what I said is that I think it's a little bit vague. It, it, it sends a, a message, but. Still not totally comfortable with it, huh? <laughs> All right, then perhaps that we will say then all well, in. By the same token, I, I, I can live with it. Okay. It's consensus approved. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? I mean, we, you know, we, I'm, I'm sensitive to the fact that um, we are not all absolutely on the same page, but to the extent that 
uh, if we c could, then it would be good to, um, if the group could agree to this with no, may, no objection. All right, hearing none, then we will adopt this statement along with um, the others that have been read, and then we'll go to the last one. I oh. We would, if, if we may, wait minute, wait, present Ms. the last statement. Okay, Ms. Richards is... Yeah, I just I thought we were going to talk for just a minute about the other Q&A. Oh, okay. I would like to, uh, we need to look at the second sentence of the answer on the top question. Um, this furthermore, the, Nor the Norris Todd bill preserves pension benefits and existing tenure rights of teaching and non-teaching employees. I think that is stronger than what the bill actually does. And we need to be, it's fine with respect to teaching employees, but we need to look at it with respect to the others. All right, other comments? Um, Ms. Richard, that's Ms. Richards' uh, committee, but um, Mr. Uh, Jones? And as a matter of fact, there are no tenure rights for non-teaching employees. Yes. So, I, so I was going to say that we probably want to do benefits and rights of, they still have rights, rights of non-teaching employees and existing tenure rights of teaching employees. Well, yeah, we need to look at it because the pensions, I don't, the pensions for them are not covered under the teacher's pensions. We've got to look at this. Well. Uh, I mean, we, all I'm trying to do is get it factually accurate under what the law provides. Right, hey, but. Can we do this? Can we, how can we accomplish that to be sure that we get this correct? I, by saying that only teachers have tenure rights. All right, I'm, uh, I'm hearing your concern or, or over pension. maybe we, we, we may say certificated employees, but. Teachers as well as non-teachers, though, still are participants in the Tennessee Consolidated Retirement System. Right. So and, there's and, no yeah, difference but, there. But, and T Norris Todd doesn't necessarily say that they're entitled to that, that Tennessee, the way that plan is structured and that whole legal, they, they get to keep that, don't get me wrong. So, but that's what's got me concerned. This thing is too broad. Okay. Too broad. So, Mr. Yeah. Richards, can we ask that you take a look at yeah. the sentence and then send yeah, back? Yeah, I'll, I'll send you. It, just all I'm, all I'm yeah. trying to do is get it accurate. Okay, and um, I think we could certainly live with this. I have got the um, – Nika has noticed that at the top that this question really only refers to teachers. And so it, it – um, the answer refers to non-teachers, but the question refers to teachers. Would it – fix things if we took the non-teaching employees uh, out, and if not, uh, we can you still go with the request? accuracy. Well, I think that when we say teachers, though, that may exclude or it may give the impression that we are excluding principals. Well, I, I mean, maybe, but the question usually arises, will our teachers be the same? I think we're, we're dealing with a uh, frequently asked questions. So, I mean, at least that's what I'm thinking about. The Perhaps if we could say certificated employees because a principal has to have some type of life. Does anybody have a comment about that? Mr. McDonald, Mayor McDonald, excuse me. That, that's fine. Just call me for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and don't call you an elephant, right? <laughs> uh, even an elephant's okay. There's some other things, maybe not. But I've been called them. The... Uh, I guess my concern is uh, with this uh, particular thing and the fact that we have a motion on the floor for this whole document and what I heard the committee chairman saying in the first part of their presentation is they wanted some input and then wanted to go back to the committee. And so we've kind of stepped ahead of their request in that motion. So I just, I just wanted to point that out. And then secondly, uh, yeah, I do think that it's important. I, I think it's important depending upon which group of parents you're talking to and their full understanding of how the school system works or lack thereof. Uh, some, it's just about my school's teacher this year because they don't even know if they'll be in that school next year. For <laughs> others, they understand that the principal hires those teachers in their school. And so it is important that they have the same mm -hmm. administrative staff in those schools so that they're more likely to keep those same teachers. So you, you get into le different levels of understanding of the educational system. Um, and just like we're debating this fine point on pensions, whether 
the Norris Tide bill covers it, or current practice is that non certified, uh, cert certificated uh, staff is uh, el uh, eligible for the, the state plan. Well, they're in the state plan, there's no movement to take them out, but the Norris Tide is silent on it. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it just. Yeah. We can make this real complex, mm -hmm. or we can take it, try to take it to the simplest common denominator, which is, I think, what the committee was trying to accomplish so that it was a quick and easy read. Well, let me mention, first of all, just to get back to our parliamentary procedures, we don't really have a motion for this particular uh, one. Were we not speaking a minute ago in terms of a vote for just that one item? Correct. So the others were in discussion. So... Um, um, I'm going to, since we, now if we want to vote on this, we need to get a motion to vote on it. If we don't, we need to just talk about it and say that we're going to take that back. Um, Ms. Bradshaw is chair, co-chair of that committee. So we did not feel that the full committee needed to weigh in on each of the FAQs. We felt that there were some frequent asked questions that needed the full executive committee's response so that then these could be talking points that they use when they're going out because we felt that many of them were being asked this question. So we, the rest of the document we will be providing to you as a committee's recommendation. It does not, in, in my opinion, it does not need to be voted on as a full committee. Okay. Um, what do we do with the comment that this, uh, that this is, we're fearful that this is not a totally accurate. Now, we'll clean it up. Okay. We'll clean yeah. it up. We don't and, have to. And Miss Stanton just never raises her hand, so I'm going to uh, call on her. I was reluctant to bring this up, but I, I feel like I must. I think there's a bigger issue here than simply the tenure or non-tenure rights or the pension rights. Memphis City Schools has a very different structure for their classified employees than Shelby County Schools has. For instance, Shelby County has special ed clerical assistants, attendance operators in every school. Memphis City does not have these clerical people. And this has been a real concern from the employees in Shelby County is, well, we have a job when when the unification comes about. So I think I don't think we need to mislead folks at this point, because I don't think we know at this point. Well, one of the things that occurs to me, and uh, Mr. Boyd, I'll uh, call on you, is that two things. One is we are trying to capture in this document frequently asked questions, and it may be that the most frequent question is about a classroom teacher, although I certainly agree with what Mayor McDonald was saying. There may be different levels of understanding, but that may getting it be I mean, we are really trying to say th this question is often asked. But even at that, that must be accurate. And so it may be taking out. I mean, I think that what the committee is asking to do is to take this back and rework this question because clearly there's not enough comfort with it. Is that correct? It's correct. Okay. Would you like to say something else? Okay. I'd like to move us to the consideration of the last okay. point, which is on the screen, <clears throat> which is not on this document. So the last piece is around a question of what is the TPC's position on the potential for separate municipal school districts. We are making the recommendation that our response be as follows. The TPC's charge as defined by the Norris Todd Bill is to create a plan to merge Memphis City Schools and Shelby County Schools to provide a high quality education for all students within Shelby County. Is there, a, can I hear a motion uh, to approve that? item so move it's it's been moved and seconded and now we can open it to discussion my parliamentarian up here is giving me a smile <laughs> any discussion on this as uh, you see yes sir I'd like dr to, green i'd like to delay this to mayor mcdonald gets back okay would that be amenable to everyone okay do we know he's coming back? <laughs> I've got his iPad. You're holding up the Mayor McDonald, we want you to know that we have held this discussion until you get in your seat. Uh, request, requested, by, requested by Dr. Green. All right, we're, we, it's been moved and seconded that this would be the statement that as the TPC that we would make. Um, 
as we are asked about um, the things that are going around, um, happening around us that we recognize. But um, so any discussion on this? Well, again, I would just state that until the uh, administrative committee has a chance to talk about structure, um, it may be premature, uh, you know, there. Uh, we, we do have a charge as a body to talk about the, school, the education of all of the children. Um, and what, I mean, when you look across the country at systems that are called unified systems, they look, many of them look a whole lot different than others. So, you know, there's just not a cookie cutter on all of those. You can't just say, this is what the unified system looks like in the United States, because it doesn't. They're called unified, and there are lots of different formations. So uh, we're, we, we, have, uh, we have a charge um, to uh, create educational opportunities. Um, and I just, think, I just think until that committee does its work and this, this committee votes that uh, whether or not we will, as a body, acknowledge the work of the separate municipal school districts as a part of this group's recommendation may be premature. Okay, is there other discussion on that? Um, Ms. Richard, are you leaning toward a mic? Yeah. One would, if one would pass that to her? <laughs> I think everybody acknowledges that the structure issue is open, but that's not what this says. This simply says, that it's our plan to put to put one that serves all the children of Shelby County. So I don't think it's premature at all. And I think we need to go forward and make it clear that that's what our plan is. But of course we will consider things that are going on around us in the sense that those are properly within the purview of the administrative committee. And that may be what comes of it. But I, I would not want to be silent on this. And, and not be willing to say we're planning for all of the students. Any other comments? It is the belief and recommendation from the committee that our full TPC needs to make a statement on this because we are being asked about it. Individual members are making statements, and so we need to provide some clarity as to what our position, what is our feeling as a commission. And so we felt as if this statement provided an opportunity for the each of the committees to still move forward and do their work. But what it did do was to find the charge and the responsibility of our committee as set forth by the um, by the law. I object to the call for the question which deletes that. So. I, I believe a call for the question requires a two-thirds majority, but it's been a long time since I've really dealt yeah. with that. Okay. Um, are there other comments? Uh, Mayor McDonald. I, I suppose then perhaps this would be a situation where we might say that the TPC has no position on separate municipal schools. Um, are there other comments? Mr. Boyd? Yes. Um, I think our position is that we are working toward a unified uh, school s district um, that serves all students in Shelby County. Uh, Mr. Jones? I, s I still would like to reiterate that this body, in essence, goes away. Perhaps it could be the next day, but while this body is charged by law, municipal school districts do not exist. So they could exist the next day, but we will not be a TPC at that particular time. So we have to look at the work that's outlined by the Norris Todd. Now, of course, yes, Norris Todd does address municipal school districts and special school districts, but that's after the life that we have been given under state law. Any other comments? All right, hearing no other comments, um, should I try the consensus route again? <laughs> Are there objections to this statement? All right, seeing objection, then all in favor of this statement, please say aye. 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 All opposed, say no. No. 
the ayes have it and this <coughs> motion carries so um, from the standpoint of the um, Transition Planning Commission um, this will be our statement about our work all right yes <coughs> That we again just to reiterate what yes. uh, the co-chair of the committee said, uh, and that is that we felt that these were of such significance that they needed to be adopted by the entire um, commission as our position, and that the other statements do not we did not come to that level um, because and we felt like the committee. Um, could shape those uh, statements and put those forward to the community. I think it should be noted in the minutes, though, that there is a particular statement that needs um, work for accuracy. That's fine. Okay. All right. And uh, that's Mr. the one related to teachers. Yes, it and, is. And other yes. employees. Okay. Was that going to be your comment? Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, now I'm looking for the right one. Um, Yes. Ms. Prescott. Yes. Was that motion to approve just that statement or everything excluding this no, one statement? it now? was the motion was the first motion. There were two motions. Okay. Uh, the first passed by consensus, and that was to approve the, um, the frequently asked question regarding the students um, remaining in the school. Okay. The second motion, which was um, approved by a voice vote, was the um, final statement um, in terms of our uh, work in regard to um, well, municipal. in regard municipal. to municipal okay. districts? So right. The, commi the committee will work on everything. And else. the committee That's will work document. on everything okay, else. Great. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, is, does that complete your um, report? Yeah. Yes, Madam Chairman. All right. Okay, we're just getting, our meetings are getting hogged by the Community Engagement Committee, it seems like, but they're doing an awful lot of work. Uh, it's hard work to do, and it's been confusing at times, but I want to conv uh, com commend them uh, for the uh, level of dedication that they have. Uh, the next item was the report from Dr. Johnson, but I believe Dr. Johnson gave his report. follow your agenda. That's all right. That's all right. Um, we uh, in the we had this on the agenda for learning opportunity requests. We had a discussion around this in the executive committee. It was recommended by Dr. Green that we charge um, our um, consulting partners uh, to identify um, five or six or whatever number it is of best practices that might be beneficial to us as we make our decisions. Uh, we we said nationally, and then we went to internationally, and that we would uh, that they would work with us in uh, working on how we could bring them as learning opportunities. We may not be flying anyone in from um, overseas, but we may we we will figure out something, and they were quite willing to work with us on that. Uh, we also had some discussion about um, having a, a little bit more in depth discussion in this uh, committee. Uh, from Chris Barbick, who is the uh, superintendent of the uh, Achievement School District. Uh, we had a, a bit of that with uh, Commissioner Huffman, but uh, I, I actually asked Mr. Barbick to come that uh, evening, but he was already engaged in Chicago. Uh, but this is something along with the opportunity for an innovation zone uh, that we also may be considering in um, that organizational administrative organization committee and something that's happening in the state of Tennessee. So that was mentioned as well as uh, the possibility of hearing uh, from uh, or learning a bit about uh, charter schools in as much, again, as this is another um, um, reform effort that is um, being driven quite um, with, with some amount of leadership from the State Department and would be something that uh, could um, be a figure into what we, we are doing. Uh, so uh, there, the executive committee's charge was to kind of move forward and try to get those things um, scheduled. And is there, are there any comments about that or any additional things that we think we should do? 
All right. How are we doing on time? A little bit late, aren't we? Okay. Uh, the next meeting is uh, January the 26th here again at Code Enforcement. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of adjourning, say aye. 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 So we've adjourned. <laughs>